Hey everyone, we're so glad that you're joining us today. We're gonna sing a few songs together. We hope you had a Merry Christmas. Come on, let's sing together. Here we go. I'll sing it out, I give you glory. I give you glory for all you brought me through and now i'm ready for whatever you want to do i'm moving forward to follow after you and now i'm ready for whatever you want to do on your presence your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. every season in every season your grace has been enough and I'm believing the best is yet to come the cross before me my hope on things above and in you Jesus is yet to come. See your presence. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door.
Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Come on, go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the Jesus Christ is born. Every 
thank you so much for the light that you've given. Father, we ask that you would speak to us this morning. Help us to hear your voice and to shine our lights for you. Do not be afraid to shout it from the rooftops of what you've done in and through us, God. Help us to love you more and more every day and to show that to you by how we live our life. God, we love you so much. We pray this in your precious name. Welcome, friends. We're glad you tuned in today. Today is special because you get three pastors Ew. for the price of one. <laughs> yeah. You can decide if that's a good deal or not. Uh, and since there's three of us, I think we get to talk three times as long. There so you I hope right. you're comfy at home. Just <laughs> nah. kidding. We'll keep it to the same amount. But I'm excited to get to do it together. Absolutely. This should be fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm Carter, pastor at New Break Ocean Beach. We got Pastor Jared here from our Scripps campus. Pastor Marcus, up and lead our Tier Santa campus. And uh, it's going to be fun. Go yeah. hang out together. We don't normally hang out together on the day after Christmas, in all honesty, <laughs> uh, but but we are today. So let me ask you, what do you normally do on the day after Christmas? Yeah. The big aftermath of the holiday. For sure. Typically, for us, it's pretty chill with our kids. You know, we're, we're just at home and our kids have a bunch of toys and there's wrapping paper everywhere. It's kind of a disaster, honestly, but yeah. it's okay. But I, I just sit and chill on the couch, honestly. Oh, beautiful. Which is totally fine with me. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I typically like to sleep in a little bit, you know, maybe till after the sun for the one time of the year. Uh, eat leftovers, definitely take the dogs to the dog beach, and then we sometimes we'll go see a movie. But my favorite part about the day after Christmas is playing Smash Brothers uh, with my Ooh. wife and my nephews. Nice. It's, it's so fun. Who wins? It's so fun. Let's not talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fun, man. Yeah, I, I'd say, uh, I'll, I'll confess, I like leaving a little bit of the mess of Christmas around. Like, I like some of the wrapping paper. That I don't put me. all my gifts away. I know, it is to my wife. Yeah. Uh, I just want it to feel like Christmas. I don't want to feel like normal life yet. But I'm glad there's a lot of sports on. Yeah. I definitely do that. Sometimes go see a movie. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to, uh, hopefully I can hit up Spider-Man yeah, or Matrix. Spider -Man. Uh, go do that. But Matrix. Uh, I, I was really thinking about what happened on the day after the first mm -hmm. Christmas. Because mm -hmm. that's what we never really talk about. Everything right. builds up to the birth and then, mm -hmm. but I mean, what's happened? Because it's not only day after Christmas for them, uh, it's the day after the birth of a new baby right. and we kind of know what that's like. Yeah. Had three kids. Yep. I don't remember what happens because it's all a blur <laughs> if you have kids. No, but you know, the day after, it's kind of similar to Christmas because everybody's really tired and it's still a mess everywhere. Yep. So, you know, maybe that's what it was like. The right. animals are all over, there's hay all over the place. Yep. You know, Mary and Joseph are still figuring out what size of diaper this new uh, baby <laughs> Jesus needs. Yeah. Uh, you know, the shepherds, they just got interrupted by this huge message. So all this aftermath. So we just thought we'd talk a little bit about, you know, what happened to them more importantly, what does God actually want mm -hmm. for us right. day after Christmas? Mm -hmm. I mean, sometime, hopefully soon, you'll be putting away all the Christmas decorations and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So what does God want after that? Like, does the story just go mm -hmm. away and now it's just kind of back to kind of our same old lives, kind of struggling through, you know, how, how does he want yeah. Christmas to actually live on after it's over? Yeah, which is, yeah. which is a great question we all should be asking, honestly, in any season of life. Because like you think about the hope of Christmas, it wasn't designed to end on December 26th, I guess you could right, say. Right. Uh, but it was supposed to keep going. That's the message of it. And so uh, if you're joining us, uh, you can grab your Bible. You can turn with us to Luke chapter 2. We're actually going to be completing uh, kind of what we read last week, if you were joining us, where we, we have these angels show up to these shepherds. Beautiful. And they present this, this beautiful message that is a great joy for all people. And it's the message that Jesus is going to be born. But we never really completed, like, what did the shepherds do? What was their response to all of this? And so I want to show you today how the shepherds responded to this message. And I think it's going to hit home for a lot of us. And so uh, Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 15, it says that when the angels had left them, meaning the shepherds, and they had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So you can hear the excitement in their voices. And then verse 16, I love this. It says, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. I love that they hurried. Yeah. There's a sense of urgency that is going on here. They right. hurried and they see that Jesus is lying in the manger. Now we don't know how long they spent there. If it was 10 minutes, if it was a day, we don't know how long they were there, but we do know that it was a life-changing moment because of the next part, how they responded to this. Because of verse 17, it says that when they, meaning the shepherds, had seen Jesus, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And look at this, 
all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Now remember this, shepherds are the outcasts. Right. No one listened to shepherds. And so the fact that everyone is listening to them and they were amazed is pretty incredible. If yeah, you think that's about cool. That'd be fun, yeah. right? To have the yeah. news now that everybody wants to lean in. For and sure. Do. Everyone wanted cool. to listen to it. Verse 19, it says that Mary, she treasured up all these things and she pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds, it says they returned and they were glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Pretty incredible story with an awesome response from these shepherds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love that. I think there's a lot we can learn from that. Usually you talk about the shepherds kind of hearing the news, but this is actually the the key part of their story. And as we'll find out, because they did this, that's why we're all here today. So a few things we can learn. One of them is this, recognize that uh, the good news of God, the gospel, the good news is too good to keep to ourselves. True. And we already live this way. We already know that good news is too good to keep to yourself. You know, you like to spread it, especially when it comes to the birth of a baby, which is the good news the shepherds had. And I think about, I've had three kids when my kids were born. Yeah, I mean, first thing we wanted to do was tell people. Uh, You know, we didn't keep it to ourselves. We share. And uh, of course, we didn't have FaceTime or Skype back then. But, you know, I I, I wrote a quick birth announcement on parchment and sent it out with the the course and carriage. And so, no, uh, we did text the people that were closest to us, call them. Mm -hmm. You know, I hoped that they would then take the message and spread it to everybody else. But, uh, you know, I I think it actually comes natural to want to just spread good news. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be major life events like having a kid. We... We're excited to share good news about finding a great restaurant, For about sure. finding a great show to stream on mm-hmm. Netflix or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, you know? Yeah. No, I was thinking, uh, so a couple months ago on my Instagram, I just asked a question of people. I was like, hey, I want to try, like, I want to know where the best California burrito is in San Diego. And hopefully you like California burritos. If not, too bad. They're good. Uh, <laughs> but I put it out there and people put a bunch of, like, ideas of restaurants. And so on Fridays, I actually, I have the day off. My kids are all in school. So for two months, I said, I'm going to try all of these California burritos at all of these places, which super healthy, I get. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and so I went to all these places, and there was one place that stood out so far. I haven't gone to all of them, but this one place uh, stood out, and it was a place called Ortiz's. You probably know it. Oh, it's yeah. In, it's in Ocean Beach. I live right by there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so good. The carne asada was, like, oh, yeah. on point. Uh, the cheese was melted perfectly. Mm-hmm. It had French fries instead of potatoes because that's the only that's way, the only way you can have a California yeah. burrito. And then the salsa added a perfect amount of flavor and heat. And guys, it was so amazing. <laughs> it wow. was so amazing. So if you're looking for a place, go to Ortiz's in Ocean Beach because it's the best California burrito I've had so far. I kind of want to just stop doing this and go there right yeah, now we just, and get right, that because that uh, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do the same thing with yeah. uh, books. Uh, I'm a bit of a nerd, right? So books, podcasts, uh, anything. Uh, the best vegan restaurants in San Diego, uh, The Village, that's one of them. Oh. You need to go check it out. Uh, or the best place to get glasses uh, in San Diego. It's actually online, Zenny Optical. Oh, so it's most affordable. Yeah, that's the way to do it. But I tell everyone about it. Mm. And, and uh, sometimes I wish we were all more enthusiastic in, in such a way that we were enthusiastic like this with the gospel, mm-hmm. with sharing the good news. Right? And, and sometimes we miss that opportunity. Mm. And I, I wish within us we could say, I, I want to tell you about the way God loves you more than I want to tell you about my carne asada, you know, <laughs> California burrito or, or the movie I'm watching on Netflix. I want to tell you how, that God loves you tremendously. And, and I feel like sometimes we stop, from, stop ourselves from doing that for a few different reasons. One is we feel like we don't know how. There's a great book. Uh, I'll recommend another book. <laughs> it's called Turning Everyday Conversations into Gospel Conversations. Very small book, easy read, but we feel like we don't know how. So let's get better at that. Let's learn how to get better. Uh, another one is we feel like we're not good enough. You're loved enough for God to place a message inside of you to go release into the world. So maybe it's not about you being good enough. Maybe it's God being God enough to trust you with this powerful mm-hmm. message. And, and lastly, sometimes we feel like, well, I don't know how they're going to respond if I tell them the good news. I'm not sure how they're going to respond. Yeah. Well, I just want to give you some freedom. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility, as Paul would say, is, is to, to plant or to water. God is the one who brings about the growth. God is the one who can change a heart. It can change a life. We simply let people know this amazing truth about God. Mm-hmm. Right? This, is, this is the whole idea, even back to the shepherds. It's come and see and then go and tell. Right? We just sang that song, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Yeah. Right? It's, I want to go and see this thing, but then I want to go and tell the world. So the shepherds come and see, experience Jesus. 
and they can't help it. I'm sure it just welled up inside of them, mm. right? I'm sure if there were more to that passage, it would say, after they saw Jesus, they hurried to the next place mm. and they hurried to the next place because they couldn't contain it. So our response as believers is to respond and answer the call of God to go and tell so that other people would respond and gather with us to come and see. This is the beauty. This is the flow of the first century church all throughout uh, scripture in the book of Acts, right? You have, you have Paul and Silas and Barnabas and these people that are, that are going through and telling the world about what God is doing. And, you know, 20 centuries later, mm -hmm. it's how we still should mm -hmm. be functioning. Mm -hmm. This is what God has for us. And I'll say for me, uh, if you've ever lived in darkness without Christ, I'm so thankful for the people in my life that surrounded me and were going tellers mm. of what they saw, even though I didn't believe it. Remember, I, I laughed in people's faces. Mm. I didn't want to hear it. It's like, come to church with me and go check this out. I didn't want to, and I played the game. And then one day, something clicked, something hit me. The fact that God could simply love me as I am and then continue to transform me and mold me into all that he's created me to be. Mm. That changed my life forever. Mm. And I wouldn't be where I'm at if it weren't for the go and tellers yeah. around me. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm so inspired that the Shepherds were the initial go and tellers. Right. We, uh, we're huge fans of The Chosen, if you've ever watched yeah. that show, and I know yeah. we all oh, have yeah. uh, oh seen it. We're, we're super into it. They had a Christmas movie they put out this year, and we actually got to see it together. Yeah. Uh, with our with our wives at the theater and uh, there's kind of a prequel to that about the shepherds the first thing that so guy good. ever made it is on the app and yeah there's a great scene in there where the first thing the shepherd says mm -hmm. after seeing them is people must know right people must mm -hmm. know that resonated with all of us it's not a direct quote of scripture but obviously it is the attitude the shepherds had people must know that mm -hmm. they hurried off right. and so yeah I'm thankful that there's people in my life that felt that people must know I mean for me uh, you, you guys know I didn't go to to a Bible college I was at a big uh, public university 25,000 students and um, went there and ended up getting to be roommates with the guy I knew from high school we weren't that close of friends mm -hmm. but you know when you find somebody you know in a college that big you yeah. hang out so we became roommates and never forget he invited me along to this Christian group he was going to called uh, Campus Crusade for Christ which yeah. is still around at lots of colleges now it's called crew by the cool kids yeah. but uh, he invited me to crew and I was I was like yeah let's go see this thing and checked it out and yeah I mean right away everyone there just had this attitude of belonging and they welcomed me and someone met with me they were they took seriously that people must know to go right. and tell and they told me a message of grace yeah. and I'd never heard it before I was all in with Jesus and God and the Bible and ready to spend the rest of my life right. trying to earn my way to God make sure that uh, I can try to alleviate some guilt and yep. hopefully get the good deeds to tip the scale in my favor but this idea of grace, it says the shepherds were amazed when they heard it. I was amazed. Mm. Yeah, that's and so it really good. was amazing yeah. grace. Yeah. So I'm glad someone went and told. Yeah, right. absolutely. And, you know, I was someone who grew up in, in church. And so there were two guys I remember specifically when I was in high school, Jeremy and Joe, who were always, they were always tellers. They would come yeah. to our life groups. Uh, they would come to my baseball games. And they were just there to support me. But they were the ones that really kept me in the understanding of who is this Jesus? And yeah. so I, I'm so appreciative of those people in my life. Yeah. And this is what we get to do uh, in San Diego. It's what we get to do all around the world. Yeah. We just get to go and tell. You know, I think about opportunities we have around the world, even through what we would call Kingdom Builders right. at, at yeah. New Break. Uh, which if you're newer to New Break, um, Kingdom Builders is how we fuel and fund the people and the projects who are bringing the good news of Jesus right. to people all over the world. And so like even through Kingdom Builders this past year, we have seen 10,000 people in Fiji get clean drinking water who didn't have it before but not only that they're getting to hear who this jesus is and so there's yeah. physical health but there's spiritual health that's good we got to do that yeah. um, i think of kids in, in costa rica and nicaragua who have a new school built for them an after school program as well mm -hmm. so they don't have to walk home scared of what might happen to them yeah, yeah. they have a safe place to be but then rescuing and restoring uh women and girls who have been trafficked like that is massive that we yeah. get to do that through kingdom builders, and that's not just around the world, but here locally, right? Um, I think of our campus here at Scripps Ranch. Uh, one of the things that we were adamant about doing over the past couple years is uh, is serving our local schools. Uh, my wife is a teacher, and so being a teacher in general is already hard. Right. Add a pandemic on top of that, and it's even more difficult. And so we wanted to go to all of our local schools and say, hey, we see you, we know it's hard. And then we asked this question, what can we do for you? 
Yeah. Like literally anything, yeah. literally anything. What can we do for you? And it has been a, a blessing to just provide reams of paper, uh, disposable masks, yeah. uh, providing lunch for teachers yeah. to say, hey, can we just feed you? And they've been so thankful. And, and the goal is not that they would go, you race the best. But like, hopefully they would see that there is a God yeah. who loves them yes. and is through people, yep. right? It's yeah. through people. But we get That's to do that. About. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that we're all committed to go and tell by go and serve, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, go yeah. and bless. So mm -hmm. it's cool what you guys are doing. I'm thankful what we've been able to do and at OB campus over this last year. Yeah. I mean, continuing to build partnerships with different business owners. Yeah. We're sharing our building with just so many places. So we good. get chances to go and tell through that. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It just kind of sprung up. Now we've got three different locations every Saturday that mm -hmm. we got volunteers every Saturday of the year. Volunteers going and giving socks to people when it's cold so and cool. feeding people that uh, just can't afford it or in some, some elderly assisted living, all this kind of stuff. Just, you know, doing it in tangible ways. Go and tell by be the church and serve. So, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're in Interior Santa, uh, someone like you, we're right in the middle of a community, yeah. right? Right in the middle of this community. And there's been such a great need, um, whether it's mental health or resources. And this past year with COVID really, taking away um, some of the opportunity for the next generation, our kids and students to get out and kind of have some fun. Tierra Santa Little League reached out to us and was like, hey, is there any way, I know this is a crazy ask, is there any way that you could help us cool. offer a Tierra Santa Little League this year? Wow. And so we said, of course, we have a generous church. And so wow. we did, and we had you know kids and families going to these games that hadn't had it for you know 15 months or so. And so they're out there playing baseball and having a blast. <laughs> And somehow we got to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. We got to simply go and tell, mm -hmm. right? And that song that we just sang, Go Tell on the Mountain, it has this line, over the hills and everywhere, yeah. right? This, is, this message of Jesus should be told everywhere. It's meant to go every single place, into the dark corners, into the places where people feel like they're undervalued or um, they, they feel like they've been forgotten or unloved. We should tell this good news to them to those who feel like they have everything but are missing the one thing that they need, we need to tell the good news to them. Right? Our, our whole passion that is within us is this idea of I get to tell you about God. I get to tell you about the goodness and the love and the mercy and the grace of God like you were talking about. I mean, from the angels to the shepherds, Mary and Joseph and the animals, right? Yeah. And all the hay and everything around. The little drummer boy got to hear yeah. it. I mean, that was great. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. To everyone, it should, it should just flow out of us. This is the best gift that we can give anyone every day of the year beyond Christmas mm -hmm. is that there is someone who loves you enough to send his son named Jesus. Mm -hmm. right? so, but I mean, when it comes to going and telling, if we know that part of the message, okay, well, Jesus, man, what is the full message? Mm -hmm. What is it really like? You know, Jesus actually explains this in, in one of his conversations with one of these religious leaders who at the time would have understood, I mean, essentially all there is to know about the teachings of the Bible, right? It, he, would have, he would have memorized the first five books of the Old Testament uh, written by Moses. I mean, he would have really understood this. He's like, I know everything about God, yet I haven't experienced him. Mm -hmm. And then he has a conversation with Jesus, and Jesus is telling him, hey, I want you to have this eternal life. And Nicodemus literally says, well, what you're saying doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Jesus responds with this, and this is the most famous summary mm -hmm. of the gospel in all of Scripture. Many of us know it. John three sixteen. I, I want to encourage you to lean in. Don't check out if you know the passage. Lean in for just a moment. For God so loved the world. Now, when Jesus said that, Nicodemus would have been like, wait, no, hold on. He loves Israel because we're his yeah. chosen people. Right? We may think, no, he loves San Diego. He loves America. No, he loves the world, all of it. God loves, so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Can you imagine mm -hmm. surrendering one of your kids? Mm -hmm. I, can only, I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. and Jesus, God does this through Jesus, and he gives us this eternal life through an eternal gift, Jesus. This gift isn't a one-time you know, it just, oh, you missed it 2,000 years ago. Yeah. No, this gift is, is ever, forever giving. It's the eternal gift that God gave. And it continues that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. If we hear eternal life, we just think, oh, I get to live forever. I can just get some more beeps on my little mm -hmm. monitor. No, it's, it's this abundant joy, immeasurable, immeasurable blessings, and the presence of God right now, no matter where you're at. This is the power. Mm -hmm. 
of the gospel. This is the power of the good news. And I think even if we know that piece, sometimes we struggle with sharing it with other people Mm -hmm. because it can be difficult. Yeah, I mean, I think about that a lot. I mean, we just said we all naturally love to share good news. We have the greatest news ever. Yeah. So why do we get all weird and squirmy and nervous <laughs> and we start talking evangelism and share your faith and talk about Jesus? And just so you know, we feel that way as yeah. well. Yeah, I know. Sorry to disappoint. You think pastors just get it naturally. We do it everywhere we go. But it's hard. I mean, we, we, we try to find ways to bring it up. And I mean, God's had to shape it in me for sure my whole life. And uh yeah, I mean, a big part of what he's taught me is just learning to do it in natural ways. And I think I've mm-hmm. I've seen it done, and really, God can use any way to do it. But uh, you know, I, I I first learned how to do it in terms of you know you got to talk to people, ask where do you where are you going after you die? Mm-hmm. Let me show you mm-hmm. why I can you know this is how you get to heaven, and make sure you don't go to the other place. And but over time, I mean, it's twenty twenty one now, almost twenty twenty two. I just, I don't know if that's the question people are asking. Mm. I realize I'm answering something that nobody's asking. Yeah, My average uh, neighbor, co, uh, you know, people I, I meet out in the community or play volleyball with, they're not wondering, man, what's really going to happen to me after I die? Mm. How do I get the forgiveness of my sins? Mm. They're not wondering that. Yeah, they want to know how to live. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, how do I navigate life and deal with paying bills and relational conflicts? And so really learned a lot. There's 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 this little book called Gospel Fluency. So and I never good. thought about that idea, idea of how do I get fluent mm-hmm. in the bigger picture of the gospel. It's not just a transaction about heaven and hell. And so, mm-hmm. you know, big idea I got out of that is this, you know, kind of find the pain point that everybody has because mm-hmm. we know everybody has one. Yeah. Everybody's struggling with something. And then learn how the gospel speaks to that because it yeah. really can. I mean, if somebody's biggest challenge is loneliness, then you talk to them about Jesus. He says, I'll be with you always, even right. to the very end. I mean, you're That's this so companion good. who never lets you down. If it's someone who struggles so much with anxiety and fear of what's going to happen, then talk about a God who mm-hmm. has this plan and, and right. can calm our fears. Mm-hmm. And people that struggle so much with guilt and shame, you emphasize the forgiveness and the amazing yeah. grace. For me, uh, my biggest struggle was with purpose. Mm. Just, am I ever going to figure out my purpose? Is it just get a job, help some company make some money, and that's kind of it. And so following Jesus gave a whole new purpose to me yeah. of uh, how I raise my kids or getting haircuts or go play volleyball or just the simplest of things now takes on kind of this new purpose of right. what is Jesus doing in this. So so I, I think that's part of how I try to do it now is I want to build a friendship without agenda. And through that naturally, I'll start to find where they're struggling mm-hmm. and share where I'm struggling, and that opens the door for God to come in. Good. Right. Yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I find myself sometimes struggling even sharing the gospel when it comes to uh, sharing the gospel with someone who maybe hurt you. Oh, right? yeah. If you've ever been in any relationships yeah. with people, mm-hmm. friendships, whatever mm-hmm. it may be, uh, it's, it requires vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And at that point, you're thinking, well, what happens if I get hurt? Mm-hmm. Well, church, you may. And also, you have the power to share with them the love of God, mm-hmm. right? And And this is the piece that has always been difficult for me and I'm still growing in this area of building relationship not to seal the deal like we talked about a little earlier but to show them the love of Christ even when it can be a little difficult at times yeah right yeah yeah Yeah, it's 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 uncomfortable too like as a I'm a natural introvert same yeah same (laughs) Um, but naturally I lean toward like when I enter a room I will I will be drawn toward the people who are easy for me to talk to. <laughs> right, it's the comfort thing. I'm, I'm always drawn to it, so I can easily miss people. Um, right. And so uh, I've been going through my, you know, just devos and reading, and I've been going through this book that, that really asked two questions that have challenged me. That any room you enter is the first question I've been asking myself is, God, who would you have me see? That's mm. really good. Who would you have really me good. see? Because um, when you think about life, I'm not the main character, even though I like to make myself the main character. (laughs) I'm not the main character. I have to remember that God's the main character. And so who does God want me to see in a room? But don't just leave it there because we're good at that. We go, God, who do you want me to see? Oh, Pastor Carter. I see you. I see you. (laughs) Thank you. But but the next question to ask was, okay, God, but what would you have me do? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the action. It's changing your perspective but then saying, God, what do you want me to do about this? And so I've been challenged in this because when you think about like our, the world we live in, God wants to transform our present, you know, place where we're at. And he wants to give us a newfound purpose in all of those things, no matter where you're at. Even thinking about the shepherds, when you look at what the shepherds did, they have a transformation of purpose in what they're doing. 
verse 20 even says, the shepherds, they returned and they were glorifying. They were praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And you ask the question, what did they return to? They didn't return to come and go to a seminary. They didn't return and say, hey, I'm going to interview at a church and be on staff. They didn't say, I'm going to return and wait for the church to serve people. No, they returned to being shepherds. (laughs) What they were already doing, the present thing, but they came in with a renewed sense of purpose because they saw a life-changing message of a king. Yeah. Of a king. And church, like that's what we get to do. We get to return to our daily lives, Mm -hmm. not what we wish it to be, but where you're at right now. Return to our daily lives and you have the message of Jesus with you today. Because remember, people must know. Yeah. People must know. And so imagine with me, like if we went into our jobs tomorrow, we go into our jobs and we don't see it as another task to do or another Mm -hmm. dollar to earn, but you see it as an opportunity. Like God, who would you have me see? And God, what would you have me do? Yeah. I think if you walked into your business or into your family, it would, it would give you a sense of purpose. Your conversations would change, um, how you talk to your friends, your family members, your favorite barista at a coffee shop, or even like the barber yeah. where you go get your haircut. That was for me this past week. Um, I got a haircut. I'm looking good. I know. Looking great, man. Um, He's sharp. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should be done. But I went into uh, my barber shop, and we are just talking about life, and uh, the owner comes up to me, and he... He called me Jerry, which whatever. Uh, my name's <laughs> Jerry. Uh, he says, hey, Jerry, what do you do for a living? Yeah. And there's that moment where you're like. Work for a nonprofit. Yeah, right. Do yeah. I say I'm a pastor right now? I don't <laughs> really do it. What's, gonna, what's that going to lead to? Because when you say that, people can easily go, oh. Yeah. And it shuts them off. Yeah. Or they're interested. But I said, oh, I'm a pastor at a church. And it was pretty incredible to see their questions after that. They were just curious. They're like. So what does a pastor actually do? Which I thought was a funny question. What does a pastor actually do? We're still figuring that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's we golf just, we all golf. week we just golf. and then yeah, work yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. But, but we just had a conversation about what I got to do and what I love. And there wasn't theology about it. It was a, here's the God I serve and here's what I get to do. And it was simple. It didn't have to yeah. be complicated. But that's what God wants to do. Go into your place. God, what would you have me do? Who would you have me see? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, and just so you know, we're working through it like you do. I, I know you, you can say, well, you work at a church. and you know, But what I love is each of us actually had to live this out before we yeah. ever did. Right. I mean, in and out Chick-fil-A. Yeah. I did software. I did work at Burger King, but uh, <laughs> software jobs and stuff. So, uh, and, and even now, I'm, I'm so grateful that we're all intentional mm-hmm. to still have right. kind of our mission field. I mean, for me, one would be, uh, you know, I play a lot of uh, beach volleyball whenever I can get out. And yeah, play with, with a lot of people that don't know what I do for a living. Right. Uh, don't go to church, just trying to build friendships with them. And this new year, I want to be more intentional mm-hmm. to really kind of hang out with them outside That's of good. that and That's afterwards. Good. But yeah, it's all about just creating those opportunities. You can talk mm-hmm. about life and mm-hmm. then that opens the door for God to speak. It mm-hmm. really does. Yeah, I, I like becoming a regular at a certain place. I'm a creature of habit by nature. Yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, I try to go to the same restaurants mm-hmm. uh, where people can begin to know your name, uh, go to the same uh, you know, barbershop, mm-hmm. like you're saying, or a grocery store. Uh, one of our one of our guys on staff here, Eddie, our student pastor at the Terrence Santa Campus, him and I go to the same gym. And when we walk into the gym, there is this this uh, guy that works there, and he always comes up and goes, compadre. And so we, you know, fist bump and everything. And I mean, it's been a couple of years. And, and I know that there's going to be a point when we get to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. But we're building that relationship. Mm-hmm. Ask him about his family. Ask him how he's doing. And there's going to be a moment when I get to say, hey, how's, how's your heart? Mm. Hey, can I tell you about Jesus? Yeah. You know, it's, it's gonna come. It may take another year or two yeah. years, I, I, but I'm dedicated it. to it. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the place to do it, yeah. 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 Space. yeah, I appreciate you sharing the idea that it's the long game. I mean, that's, that's a really big good. part of what I had to that's learn. Really good. We're not real estate agents trying to hurry and close the deal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a long, yeah. you know, it's just building the friendships without agenda like you're doing. Of course, the great thing of making the gym your mission field is then you actually have to go True. regularly. True. So there you go. Have it's to. not just a New Year's resolution. You'll see him there all year long, <laughs> not just first two weeks of January. Yeah. It's going to be busier. Just It is, that. yeah. But I won't tell you what gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, before we wrap up, I mean, we shared a little bit of our ideas, um, but what's... 
even more some practical ideas mm -hmm. for everybody listening because they're in all different mm -hmm. walks of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, stay at home parents, students, mm -hmm. uh, business owners, bosses, you know, yeah. all this kind of stuff. You know, how can people do this? Uh, so we just want to share a couple more quick practical ideas. Uh, you know, one for me is uh, I, I love doing stuff around food. Yeah, I think always. that's just a, yes. a natural thing and you see that a lot through the Bible too. So whether it is coworkers, neighbors, people at the gym, people you play volleyball with, you know, how do you take that next step of, you know, invite them out to coffee, uh, invite them to dinner, have them in your place even, because yeah. that speaks yeah. a lot. Uh, you know, you think about, and I'm still challenged getting to know my neighbors, know more of their names, but, uh, you know, it's it, it's easy to just kind of have that casual relationship with somebody, just kind of the head nod, even <laughs> for years. But once yeah. we've eaten together and done one meal, that relationship's at a whole different mm -hmm. level. Completely. So maybe you could even challenge yourself mm -hmm. to say, all right, one weekend night a month, maybe like third Friday of the month, that's the night we set aside to get a babysitter, mm -hmm. to always invite someone, we know, not someone from church, just invites people to dinner, yeah. not from church. And then you get all month long to pray about it, or maybe right. it's once a week for you. But mm -hmm. uh, so that's one idea. Yeah, yeah, I think you mentioned students too. Like if yeah. you're in middle school or high school, there's lots of different ways you could support your mm -hmm. friends and be there for them. Like. Yeah. Um, I loved when students came to my like baseball game when I was a high schooler and so go to your friend's football game or basketball game and, and support them because that means a lot, by the yes. way. Um, but even like there's a winter camp coming up, inviting a friend and say, hey, you want to come to winter right. camp with me? Come hang out. Like that yeah. goes a long way and it shows that you care about them. And so those are some ways for students. I know for me personally, something I've been working on is, is when you get to know people, you get to hear their hurts. You right. get to share in the pain. And so that opens the door to even just say, hey, can I pray for you? Mm -hmm. And I That's found cool. most people don't yeah. turn you down, right? right? Whether they believe in God or not, they exactly. won't turn you down. So, hey, can I pray for you? And then don't say, I'll do that later. I'll do it now. Like, can I pray for you now? Yeah. And so we've done that. That's something that has helped us is one, become a little bit more bold but you're not like diving into the Bible, Matthew chapter seven, so yeah. just saying, can I pray for you yeah. and support you? So that's something that, is, that has been powerful. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, uh, Nick and I, uh, we live in a neighborhood where we're really close to our neighbors and we've had to learn how to interact with them mm -hmm. beyond just the nod, like oh, you're yeah. saying. And so on our fridge, we have a little diagram. Uh, n neither of us are artistic. <laughs> so we have a square with a triangle on top of it, but we put the names of the people that live next to us. We put the couple's names. And it's been so cool just to be able to call them by name. Yeah. And uh, just the other week, one of them walked up, hey, can I talk to your cook? Yeah, sure. And they were talking about a problem they were having at their house with um, just some bad things going on. And they said, hey, you know, would you keep an eye out and just you know, kind of be praying for us? Mm -hmm. I mean, that would have never happened mm -hmm. if we were just the head nod neighbors, mm -hmm. right? But it, it took a step and, and I think that's, that's all of us. I think now is the time that we take that step. Right? So if you're watching, you're saying, well, what do I do? Well, here's the challenge. I wanna see all of us be the most optimistic person in any room we walk into. Mm -hmm. We have the good news mm -hmm. for all people, not just good people, for all people, yeah. for everyone. We should walk in, be smiling, people are like, there is, what are you drinking? What's going on? Why are you so excited and happy? Well, I have Jesus in my life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like experiencing that, and we should be able to share that with everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe you're saying, well, you know, I don't know if I'm there yet. Well, I've been like that as well. I don't know if I'm there yet. And there's a three words that I, I've had to begin to tell myself, and even as when I first became a believer, what I told myself all the time, and it's this, I am loved. Mm -hmm. What if we just start there? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd walk into a room completely different if I knew that there is a God who created the entire universe that loves me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am loved. I am loved, yeah. I am loved. It changes how you walk and how you talk. And, and even just that understanding will, will change your, your ministry and the way your mission field because people will see that. And with words or without words, people see, oh, there's something about this person. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you'll start to notice it change. And you'll wanna say, you are loved. Yeah. I'm loved so much that, man, I gotta tell other people, you yeah. are loved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a couple great phrases really to go into your new year with. I am loved, people must know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People must know that they're loved. Uh, I'm, I'm so thankful that God chose to announce this incredible news to the shepherds and then that they felt that urgency of people must know and they told people and then the disciples of Jesus went and told people right. and then every generation did since then because if one of them doesn't, none of us are here. Right, right. None of us know about Jesus, know the good news. I mean, I'm blown away about that thought that uh, sort of Christianity is only ever one generation away from extinction. Wow. 
that we all carry this urgency of mm. passing it on uh, to the people around us. So we want to keep being that as Newbreak. Let's yeah. be the church, people that go and tell people all over San Diego, all over where you live, uh, right. all around the world, let's be the church by going and telling. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, 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 I love it. People must know, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. It's for everyone. And so uh, let me pray for you guys as we head out, as you end this year and we move into a new year. Pray that God would give us the boldness to go. Yeah. yeah. That's a call on all of us. It's not just for me and the pastors. Yeah. You watching, it's for all of That's us. Right. Go. Uh, and it's going to require confidence and faith and strength. Okay. So let me pray for us as we end our time together. And so, God, we are thankful that you uh, brought a Savior to us. God, that you brought your son, Jesus, uh, for people who aren't that good. And that's all of us, God. Mm -hmm. And so as we move into um, the end of this year and into a new year, God, we pray that you would give us a confidence, God, that you would remind us that we have the best message ever. And we not only get to live it for us, but we get to share it with other people. And so, God, as we move into our workplaces and with our families and into coffee shops and into restaurants, God, God, remind us, like, who would you have us see? And then what would you have us do? Because we want to change the world and we know that you want to use us. So God, do something great in us. We're excited for what this new year has in store for all of us as people and as a church. And so do something great. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What an awesome challenge for us as a church that we go and tell the good news that this Christmas season and all of the joy that's wrapped up in it, that it doesn't end here, but instead it goes on because Jesus was born, our Messiah was given to us, and he is a living God. And we get to go and tell that to others. So I continue that challenge that we go and tell your neighbor, your friend, your barber, whoever it is, that you go and tell them the good news. Something we want to make sure that you know about is next Sunday, January 2nd, we'll be back to our regular programming or schedule, which means we'll be back to online and in-person services, and we can't wait to worship with you as a community. Which, speaking of community, you got to hear some really awesome stories of what New Break has been able to do as a church when it comes to loving on our community. Whether that's serving teachers or opening up our church for others or even supporting a little league, all of that is just to love on our community. And none of that could happen without your generosity, without your obedience and your kindness in giving. It's because of your giving that we've been able to see God move in our communities. So thank you. I know some of you plan to do a year-end gift, and so please note that we won't see each other again until the new year, and so you can give online at the link that's popped up here. Or maybe you're looking to do something like giving stocks. You can actually do that, and you can find all the info at newbreak.church forward slash stock. And you, again, can find all of the info there. And maybe you're asking, why a year-end gift? What does that even mean? Well, year-end gifts help us to propel into the next year so that we're not paused, waiting for the resources so that we can start loving on our communities again, but instead we enter into that new year already serving and loving on our communities. So thank you, because it allows us as a church to go and tell. Friends, have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Sunday.